Mpa. We are talking about the gifts of the Spirit. And I want just to borrow one statement that I, uh, I, I give you last time. Nataka kuchukua uh, jambo ambalo nilisema wakati ule mwingine. That the Spirit of the Lord. Ya kwamba roho wa Mungu or the giftings of the Lord. Ama karama za Mungu. They build Christ church. Inajenga kanisa la Kristo. And I want us we uh, that we open our Bibles in the book of 1 Corinthians. I'm going to read uh, a very big passage. Amen. Amen. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter number 12. From line number 11 to the last line. And because of time, uh, uh, maybe I should read. And line number 11, the Bible says, All these are the works of one and the same Spirit, and He gives them to each one just as He has determined. The body is a unit, though it is made up of many parts, and though all its parts are meaning, they form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one Spirit into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slave or free, or slave or free and we are all given the one spirit to drink. Now the body is not made up of one part, but of many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason cease to be part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, uh, it would not for that reason cease to be part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an eye, where should, where would the sense of uh, smell be? But in fact, God has alleged the part, the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all, all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. Mark line number 20. The eye cannot say to the heart, I don't need you. And the head... Put it off. Whatever is bringing that problem, put it off. The eye cannot say to the heart, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seems to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpre uh, unpresentable are treated with special modesty. While our presentable part needs need to need no special treatment. But God has combined the members of the body and has given greater honor to the parts that lacked it. So that there should be no division in the body, but that its part should have equal concern for each other. Mark also line number 25, I read it again. So that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now, you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. You can also mark line number 27. And in the church, God has appointed first of all apostles, second prophet, the teachers, then workers uh, of miracles, also those having gifts of healing, uh, those able to help others, those with gifts of administration, and those speaking in different kind of tongues. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, do all work miracles, do all have gifts of healing, do all speak in tongues, do all interpret, but eagerly desire the greater gifts. And Pastor Kama will continue to teach about that greater gift. The Bible is very clear. 
that our body is made up of so many parts. But there is no part in our body that is bigger than the other. Every part of our body is important to each other. There is no part in our body that can just stand and say were lent not for me, the other part could not be there. Just as it is, in the giftings of the Lord, there are many in variety, but they make up the body of Christ. I hope you have got your Bible, you have got your notebook, you have got your pen, and yourself we are there. Hallelujah. Uh, as we said that together we can build Christ church. We can only do so if we all allow the giftings of the Lord to be in operation. I have only finally said this that there is no gift of sitting down. There is no ministry of sitting down. However, we cannot all be here at once. There is order in the house of the Lord so that we may not go, uh, cause confusion. But in the area of your gifting, you need to understand it well so that when the owner shall come demanding for an account. You receive the reward that you deserve. Hallelujah. Amen. Put number one. Categories of gifts. Categories of gifts. Because unless we understand this category, we may not understand their operations. And we may not understand them all. And as I said last time, the key level and scriptures of the same can be found in the book of Romans, chapter number 12. Line number three to line number eight. We can also see something in the book of 1 Corinthians. Chapter number 12 of line one to the last. Chapter number 13 of the same book. And chapter number 14. We also go to the book of Ephesians. Chapter number 4 and line number 11. Those are the key scriptures. But the backbone is in the book of Matthew chapter number 25. And line number 15. About the person who decided to go to Afar country. And he gave gift to his servant. Talanta one was given five the second one two and the last one one and in the due time he came back demanding for an account and that is exactly what will happen but many of us may be found unaware just because of the, uh, the advice of Paul Ushauri wa Paulo. to the church in Corinth. He called them to come out of the spirit of ignorance. One of the greatest disasters in the life of a believer is when a believer lives in ignorance. Hosea put it very clearly in Hosea 4, 4, 4, 6. That where there is ignorance, People perish. Therefore, we need to come out of this ignorance. The ignorance of sin. Of sin. 
ya kusema kuuza kusema I don't want to be seen Sitaki kuonekana Probably people will say he this and that Kwa inawezekana kwamba watu watasema hivi na vile If you fear that Kama utaogopa hilo When the owner shall come demanding for an account Kati mwenyewe atakuja akitarajia kufanywa hesabu You can imagine the category shall be found in Uta uta utaweza kuwaza utakuwa katika mpangilio upi And therefore in the categories of the giftings of the Lord Na hivyo basi katika mpangilio wa karama za Mungu We can classify them in three units Tunaweza ziweka katika mpangilio mitatu Unit number one. Ile ya kwanza The gift of speech Ah uh, ile uh, karama ya usemi And and uh, yeah the the category is yeah this like that Mpangilio wa usemi And under that we have three Na katika in the, in na katika ule mpangilio wa usemi tuko na tatu We have tongues Kuko na ndimi interpretation of tongues kuna kutafsiri zile ndimi any prophecy na kuna unabii they are at the, the category of speech ziko katika mpangilio wa usemi hallelujah hallelujah category number two. ya pili we have the gifts of revelation kuko na uh, karama ya ufunuo the gifts of revelation karama za ufunuo and that is the award of wisdom hiyo ni neno la hekima a word of knowledge neno la u- knowledge ufahamu and the discerning of spirit na kupambanua roho the discerning of spirit kupambanua roho category number three. ya tatu the gift of ability a uh, ki- uh, karama ya uwezo and that is under that we have the gift of faith na katika hiyo tuko na ile karama ya imani we have the gift of healing tuko na karama ya uponyaji and working miracles na kufanya miujiza it, the list is not uh, complete na ile 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 maandisha haijafika mwisho the giftings are so many ah zile karama ni mingi but under those three categories lakini katika ile mipangilio mitatu we are going to go expounding tutaenda tukichabanua and in your point number two na katika ile manda ya pili whom may the spirit use in the operation of such gifts ule ambaye Mungu anatumia anatumia kwa kufanyia kazi katika ile ile karama who is the person god uses ni nani Mungu utumia in the line of all those categories of giftings katika ile ile mipangilio ya zile karama and point number one. ya kwanza ni in the member of the body mmoja wa sehemu ama mmoja wa mwili and i want us to underline that na nataka tuweke mstari pale in the member of the body kila mmoja wa mwili in one who is not in the body yule ambaye hayuko katika mwili don't you worry this is my wife <laughs> maybe Uyu ni bwana kwa wale ambao ni wageni we are one body tuko mwili mmoja and these gifts are giftings are only given na hizi vikarama zinapeanwa to part of that body kwa sehemu ya ule mwili they are not distributed to anyone azipeanu kwa mtu yoyote you must have a belonging in the body ni lazima ukue na sehemu katika mwili you must be part of that body ni lazima ukue sehemu ya ule mwili and it all start by you giving your life to jesus christ na inaanzia kwa wewe kupeana maisha yako kwa kristo and accepting him as your personal savior mbali kama mwokozi wako once you do that confession unapofanya ule uamuzi you are made part of the body of christ unafanyika sehemu ya mwili wa Kristo as you continue to mature up na unapoendelea kukoma then you are entitled hivyo basi unadhaminiwa that when Christ shall see that you are mature enough wakati Kristo ataona ya kwamba umekomaa ya kutosha you will receive that gift utapokea karama and gifts are not distributed evenly na hizi le karama aziachiliwi zikitoshana they are given according to the measure of grace zinapeana kulingana na neema in the bible in the book of romans 12 of 6 katika biblia wa rumi 12:6 paul is saying paulo anasema that the giftings are given in proportion to your faith ya kwamba karama zinapeanwa kulingana na neema in another fashion the bible says katika safari nyingine biblia yasema that the giftings of the lord are given according to the measure of grace biblia inasema kwamba karama zimepeanwa kulingana na kipimo cha neema so in that application hivyo basi katika ile tafsiri we can say grace is equal to faith 
Hivyo basi ninasema kwamba neema inatoshana na imani yako. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And who knows where this gifting will be? Will go? Na nani anajua hizi karama zitaenda wapi? That is not your law. Hiyo sio kazi yako. If you read in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 12 and 9 by 11. Ukisoma wa Korintho wa kwanza 12:11. The Bible says. Biblia yasema. It is the spirit of the Lord. Ni roho wa Mungu. Who distribute this abilities. Ni yeye anapeana uweza. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But one and the same spirit lakini moja kwa roho moja works all these things anafanya haya yote distributing to each one individually as he wills akipeana kila kwa kila mmoja jinsi anavyotaka if it is not about you kwa hivyo si kwa ajili yako the way you work is very simple kazi yako ni rahisi how well are you prepared je umejiandaa kiwango gani how well are you mashua uje umekomaa kiwango gani because the mission of grace kwa maana ile hali ya neema is defined by your maturity. Inategemea kukomafu wako. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We don't mature the same. Atukomai uh, kama kwa wakati mmoja. Just our physical children doesn't mature the same. Jinsi vile watoto wetu wa kiasilia wakomai kwa wakati mmoja. You may have twins. Unaweza kuwa na watoto ambao ni mapacha. But you find one is taller than the other. Unapata mwingine ni mrefu kuliko mwingine. That is exactly the same. Hivyo ndio iko sawia. Hivyo it is the will of God. It is God. Ni Mungu who distribute ambaye upeana those giftings zile karama according to his own will kulingana na mapenzi yake mwenyewe hallelujah there is nothing that we can do about that hakuna kitu tunaweza fanya kuhusiana na hayo amen amen that one you can find in the book of 1 Corinthians 12 hiyo unaweza pata katika wa Korintho wa kwanza 12 line number 7 mstari wake wa 7 line number 11 11 also in chapter number 14 katika kifungu cha 14 line number 26 26 and line number that one na 31 no member should come behind in any gift no member should come behind hakuna mtu amapaswa kuwa nyuma ya kila karama amen first corinthian chapter number 1 and line number 7 wa korintho wa kwanza moja saba let us go there you see Wacha twende pale. So that you uh, so that you come short in no gift. Ya kwamba usipungukiwe na karama. Eagerly waiting for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Tunapoendelea kungoja ufunuo wa Bwana wetu Yesu Kristo. That is King James fashion. Hiyo ni tafsiri ya King James. Another point. Ingine. We should be filled with the spirit. Tunapaswa kujazwa na roho. Jesus Christ. Yesu Kristo. Did not distribute these giftings. Akua akupeana hizi karama. Until when the Holy Spirit came upon the church. Mpaka wakati roho wa Mungu alishukia kanisa. Because it is the spirit of the Lord. Kwa sababu ni roho wa Mungu. Who defines our strength and our weaknesses. Ambaye anatambulisha wa uweza wetu na udhaifu wetu and that is the reason why in acts 1:8 says na diposa biblia katika matendo ya mitume 1:8 yasema in in that you will receive power katika hiyo mtapokea nguvu you shall receive ability mtapokea uweza to receive all these giftings kupokea hizi vipawa zote hallelujah hallelujah therefore a gift without power is giftless Ah, kwa hivyo kuwa na karama ngila ngu, bila nguvu sio karama tena. Every gift must be backed up by power. Kila karama ni lazima ikuwe na msukumo wa nguvu nyuma yake. A minister without portfolio is ministerless. Ule minister bila portfolio sio minister tena. You are just consuming our money for nothing. Unatumia pesa yetu bure. Hallelujah. Amen. Therefore, a person without gift, uh, a person with gift and gift without power, it is giftless. Kwa hivyo mtu kuwa na karama na karama haina nguvu basi huyo mtu ana karama yoyote. And that is I want to say something very uh, profound in uh, on that context. Na nataka kuleta kitu ambacho ni maana sana katika ule u utafasaha it is god who give us gift ni mungu ambaye anatupea karama and he, he gives us that gift if we prove that we are mature na anatupea ile karama tukimuonyesha ya kwamba tumekomaa but once you compromise your integrity lakini utakapo changanya kujichanganya utakapo jichanganya the 
operating grace and power can be withdrawn. Hivyo basi ile nguvu na ule uwezo wa kufanya kazi unaweza ondolewa. You remain with the gift. Unabakia na karama. But gift with no grace and power. Una, lakini karama haina neema na haina nguvu. Do I prove that in the book of Romans 11:29? Ni kuonyesha hiyo katika Warumi 11:9. 29. The Bible says Biblia nasema that the giftings of the Lord are not irrevocable. Ya kwamba karama za Mungu aziondolewi. They are not irrevocable. Azi aziondolewi, azirudishwi. You receive the gift unapokea karama and you receive the grace na unapokea neema and the power of operation na nguvu za utendakazi but once you compromise lakini ukichanganya the grace is withdrawn hivyo basi neema inaondolewa the power is withdrawn na nguvu ya utendakazi inaondolewa because it is the power of the spirit kwa maana ni nguvu ya roho that help us to operate inayotusaidia kufanya kazi in the light way katika njia inayofaa and i want to take you back nataka kukurejesha nyuma in the book of First Samuel chapter number 16 Katika kitabu cha Samuel wa kwanza 16 There is something that was happening in line number 13 and line number 14 Kuna kitu kilitukia katika mstari wa 13 14 And for you to understand well Na kwako ndipoza uelewe vema I want to remind us Nataka kukumbusha That Saul was not a king from God Ah kwamba Sauli hakuwa mfalme kutoka kwa Mungu Saul was a king of men Sauli alikuwa mfalme wa watu Because the instruction of God toward the children of Israel Maana maagizo ya Mungu kwa kwa, kwa watoto wa, in, wa Israeli was very clear Ilikuwa wazi that as you go and possess that land Na kwamba mnapoenda na kumikliki hile nchi Do not imitate your neighbors Usiende kufanya kama vile majirani wanafanya Do not be like them Usikuwe kama wao Let me remain to be your God Wacha nifanyike Mungu wenu When they reach to the land of the promise Wakati walifika katika nchi ya hadi In chapter number 8 of Samuel Katika kifungu cha 8 Samuel wa kwanza They demanded for a king Walitaka kuwa na mfalme And Samuel pleaded with the Lord Na Samueli akamwomba Mungu And God said to Samuel Na Mungu akamwambia Samuel Grant them as they desire Ah uh, wapatie nchizo wanavyotaka In the name of Jesus Christ Katika jina la Yesu Kristo Wapatie Because they have asked of it Kwa sababu wameuliza Achana ye Achana ye Hallelujah Give them Wape And from there Na kutoka pale This is the most unfortunate thing I came to learn. Hiki ndio kile kitu kibaya kilichotukia nilikuja kujifunza. So you can enter into captivity into the land of your blessing. Hivyo basi unaweza ingia katika utumwa katika nchi ya baraka zako. This final captivity was not outside the land of the promise it was inside the land of the promise the reason being they did not follow the instruction they did not obey the instructions were very clear don't be like them and God said to Samuel Samuel wapatie because they have seen that i have not been their king kwa sababu wameona kwamba sipaswi kuwa mfalme wao and bad things started happening na mambo mabaya kaanza kutukia i don't have time to go through those uh, scriptures sina wakati wa kupitia yale maandiko but in chapter number 15 lakini katika kifungu cha 15 of the same samuel katika kitabu cha samuel wa kwanza there were very clear instruction to Saul kulikuwa na maagizo yalikuwa wazi kwa Sauli to the Amalekite kwa wameleki once you go there unapoenda pale destroy everything anamaliza kila kitu and that is the problem that us many serve na hiyo ndio sababu shida ambayo tuko nayo many of us hear the voice of god wangi wetu tunasikia sauti ya mungu but we don't respond accordingly lakini sisi hatufanyi vile imesema there are some issues that are still there are some part there are some areas we have not yet dealt with kuna sehemu na mambo ambayo hatujashughulikia and uh, he decided na akaamua to hide sham kuficha zingine under the name of god kwa jina la Mungu. And as a result of that, na kwa sababu ya hiyo, he was rejected. Akakataliwa. So you can be rejected even though you have a gift. Hivyo basi unaweza kataliwa hata kama uko na karama. See chapter number 16. Angalia kifungu cha 16. There was no 
two king who can be in the throne at the same time in the same nation akuwezi kuwa wafalme wawili wamekalia kiti kwa wakati mmoja kwa taifa moja one must be on the throne and the other one must be down there lazima mmoja akalia kiti na mwingine akuwe chini kule and because of the gifting of the lord which are not irrevocable na kwa sababu ya karama za Mungu ambazo azirejeshi what then happened Nini ni kilitukia? The Bible says. Biblia inasema, and never forget this. Na usisahau hili. Read line number 13 and 14 you see something that was happening there. Soma mstari wa 13 na 14 uone kilichokuwa kinatukia. One man has already been rejected. Mmoja amekataliwa. And another man is being accepted. Na mwingine anakumbalika. And someone was sent in the house of Jesse. Na Samuel akatumwa katika nyumba ya Yesse. I don't want to go through the process. Sitaki kuendelea katika ile mpangilio iliendelea pale. But I go direct to the young boy. Na lakini naenda kwa yule kijana mdogo. By the name David. Kwa kila kwa jina lake Daudi. The Bible says. Biblia yasema. When Samuel was anointing David. Wakati Samuel alikuwa anamtilia mafuta Daudi. The spirit of the Lord was coming over David. Na roho wa Mungu alikuwa anashuka katika maisha ya Daudi. Then is the spirit of God. Na hivyo basi roho wa Mungu. Was leaving Samuel. Alikuwa anamuelekeza uh, Samuel. Was leaving, leaving, leaving. Alikuwa anaacha It is chapter uh, chapter 16 and line about 13. 16 uh, 16:13. And an evil spirit na roho mchafu was filling uh, Saul. Alikuwa anamjaa Sauli with the depression. <laughs> Kwa kusongwa na mawazo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give me the uh, give me uh, give me the new translation. This is New King James version. Fatia yo tafsiri. I read I read line number 13 give me line 13 then So as David stood there among his brothers Samuel took the flask of olive oil he had brought and anointed David with the oil and the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David uh, from that day on then Samuel returned to Ramah line number 14 Now the spirit of the Lord had left his soul na hivyo basi roho wa Mungu alikuwa amemwacha Sauli and the Lord sent a tormenting spirit that filled him with the depression and fear. Na basi roho wa Bwana alikuwa amemwacha Sauli na roho mbaya kutoka kwa Bwana ukamsumbua ukamsumbua. Therefore you can remain with the gift without power without grace hivyo basi unaweza kaa na karama bila nguvu na bila neema i need your bible soma biblia yako the soul was killed sauli akauawa despite being a king hata kama alikuwa mfalme because he did not have power maana hakuwa na nguvu are we together tuko pamoja never on that point evasion 5 katika ile pointi wa efeso 5 line by 18 18. Let us all desire. Wacha sisi wote tutamani. Not to be drunk of wine. Tusikuwe tumelewa na mfinyo. But drunk of the spirit. Lakini tulewe na roho wa Bwana. Kila mmoja kuwe mlevi wa roho. Amen. Yakobo unaona mtu anakanyanga huku na kanyanga kule anakanyanga kule amejazwa, amelewa, amejazwa. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Another point is. Ingine ni. We must be delir- uh, the serious of being used in this way desire desire from the word desire lazima tutamani kutumika in this way kwa njia hii first corinthians 12 of that one wa korintho wa kwanza 12 you can only exercise your gift through desire to serve unaweza fanyisha karama yako kazi ukiwa na ile tamani ya kufanya kazi another point is ile ingine ni we should not be ignorant concerning the operations of the gifts atupasi kupuuza jinsi vile vipawa za roho zinafanya kazi because this is the cause where by many shall be called a shrewd and unfaithful servants maana hapa ndio wengine wataitwa ya kwamba hawafai watumwa wasiofaa first corinthians chapter number 12 and line number 1 wa korintho wa kwanza 12 moja another point is ngine ni we must be the serious of spiritual gifts ni lazima tukue na kutamani kuwa na vipawa za roho you desire to receive ukue na kutamani kupokea so that you can be of use in the house of God. Niposa utumike katika nyumba ya Bwana. 1 Corinthians 14:1 to 6. Wa Korintho wa kwanza 14 moja mpaka 6. And that point is we should be motivated by genuine love for the body. Ni lazima tutiwe tutiwe nguvu na upendo wa ukweli katika mwili. We must have that genuine love. Lazima tukue na upendo wa ukweli. According to 1 Corinthians chapter number 13 
kulingana na wakorintho wa kwanza 13 and also we need to have a pure desire to edify the body of christ na lazima tukue na tamanio mzuri ya kutia nguvu kanisa la kristo first corinthian 14:12 wa Korintho wa kwanza 14:12 and i am going to ask you questions na ndawauliza maswali so you need to be very careful lazima uandike vizuri g hiyo ingine we should seek to excel in the operation of gifts lazima tutamani kufanikiwa katika kutenda kazi wa vipawa give us first corinthian 14:12 tupatie wa Korintho wa kwanza 14:12 we should seek to excel Nazima tutamani ama tutake kuendelea. Excel is a choice word. Kufani, ama kuendelea ni kuamua kwako. You need to make a deliberate choice. Lazima uwafanye uamuzi wako. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can be an evangelist but a seated evangelist. Unaweza kuwa mwinjilisti ambaye ameketi. You can be as an intercessor but a seated intercessor. Unaweza kuwa mwombezi ambaye ameketi. You can all have all these gifts with no excellence. Unaweza kuwa na vipawa hizi vyote lakini hazina a uh, ufanisi ama hazina kuendelea and the same spirit is true for you na ule roho ako kweli kwako since you are so eager to have the special abilities kwa sababu uko na kule kutamani kuwa na hii kipawa specially the spirit gives uh, roho basi upeana seek those that will strengthen the whole uh, church hivyo basi tutamani ta, ta, zile ambazo zitatia nguvu kanisa lote give me also Uh, I, I think let, let me just read it from, from NIV. Watch I some katika tafsiri ya NIV. So it is with you. Basi iko nawe. Since you are eager to have spiritual gifts. Kwa sababu unatamani kuwa na vikarama ya roho. Try to excel in the gifts that build up the church. Jaribu sana ku, kuendelea ama kufanikiwa katika karama ambayo inanufaisha ina, kanisa. Desire to excel. Tamani sana kuendelea. It's very key. Uh, ku, ku, kutamani kuendelea ni ya maana. Are you a singer? Are you a singer? Wewe ni mwimbaji. Excel in your ministry. Ah uh, efanikiwa ama endelea katika uimbaji. The thing that still excellence in ministry is very easy. Kile ambacho kinaimba ule ufanisi ama ule kule kuendelea. When you term your ministry as if you are passing pa, you are serving pastor. Wakati unafanya kazi ambayo Mungu amekupa kama unafanyia mchungaji. When you has got a long motive in the ministry. Kama uko na mawazo maofu kuhusiana na huduma. Then it is still excellency. Basi ina, inaiba ule ufanikii kule kufanikiwa. We need to be very careful. Lazima tukue waangalifu. Point number three. Hiyo ingine ya pili ya tatu. The gift of tongues. Ah, uh, karama ya lugha. First Corinthians 12:10. Wa Korintho wa kwanza 12:10. There are two functions of tongues. Kuna kazi mbili za dimi ama lugha. And they are manifested in two functions. Na na wanyonyeshwa wazi kwa njia mbili. One, moja, the devotional tongues. Ah, zile dimi za kibinafsi. Dimi za kibinafsi. Yes. Za kibinafsi. The purpose of which is to edify the person using it. Ah, sababu yake ni ya kuinua ama kujenga yule ambaye anazitumia. One of the primary sign of a spirit filled person is speaking in tongues. Moja yapo ya kitu ambayo ni cha msingi sana ya kuonyesha mtu amejazwa na roho ni kunena na lugha. But that does not mean that you are not spirit filled. Lakini hiyo haimaanishi ya ujajazwa na roho. You may be spirit filled but not speaking in tongues. Unaweza kuwa umejazwa na roho na bado uongei na But one clear uh, primary example is a speaking in tongues. Lakini moja wapo ya ile inaonyesha ya kwamba umejazwa na roho ni kunena na lugha. And when one is speaking in those tongues na wakati mmoja anazungumza na zile ndimi that person is only edifying himself huyo mtu anajijenga mwenyewe hallelujah hallelujah function number two ya pili is edifying the church ni ya kunufaisha kanisa these tongues cannot edify the church hizi dimi aziazi nufaisha kanisa until or unless they are accompanied 
by interpretation mpaka wakati zitafuatana na utafsiri so if god is using you in the area of speaking in tongues hivyo basi kama mungu anakutumia katika njia ya kunena na ndimi and this ministry is meant for the people na huduma iko kwa sababu ya watu it is supposed to be accompanied by interpretation basi inapaswa kufuatana na utafsiri others without interpretation hivyo basi bila utafsiri it will sound just a noise to the hearer basi itakuwa ni makelele kwa wanaosikiza and it will not benefit them na haitawafaidi it will not edify them haitawainua but once it is in conjunction with the interpretation lakini ikifuatana na utafsiri it shall edify you together with the healer basi itakunufaisha wewe na wanaosikia we together je tuko pamoja then i want to give you some guidelines hivyo basi nataka kukupea mwelekezo to use tongues in public Kutumi, kwa kutumia ndimi katika umati the guidelines of using tongues in the public the guidelines a uh, mwelekeo wa kutumia ndimi mahali kuna watu wengi of using tongues yes unapotumia ndimi kwa watu wengi and guideline number one. moja it is it should be motivated by love ni lazima ikuwe na msukumo wa upendo you know you know <laughs> We protestant people we are funny people. Sisi watu waki Pentecost tuko watu wa ajabu ajabu. You have not paid your rent. Haujalipa <laughs> rent yako. And you hear the landlord or the agent are on your doors. Na unasikia ule mwenye nyumba anabishabisha mlango. I don't know whether it happened in your dispensation. Sijui kama inafanyika katika kizazi chenu. Because in our dispensation it was there. Kwa sababu katika wakati wao ilikuwa when the landlord or the landlady or the agents are just about to come wakati hao wenye nyumba walikuwa na karibu kuja we are locking the door nafunga nyumba na ndani and on our private <laughs> praise na waka, mahali pao pasiri you just hear tongues nasikia ndimi so that we can terrorize uh, the agents ndipo za <laughs> kuangaisha ule mwenye nyumba that was not an exercise out of love hiyo ikuwa ya upendo it is longly used imetumika vibaya every gift of speaking in tongue in public kila karama ya kunena na ndimi katika mahali kuna watu should be motivated by love lazima ikuwe imesukumwa na upendo first corinthians 13:1 wa korinto wa kwanza 13:1 because it is love that carries all those gifts kwa sababu ni upendo unaobeba hizo karama zingine zote it is the backbone Upendo ndio ambao uti wa mgongo. I want to take you back to a message Pastor Kamau preached last. Ninataka kupeleka kwa ujumbe wa Bema mchungaji Kamau alihubiri mwisho. Point number two. Ya pili. It should be accompanied by interpretation. Ni lazima ifuatane na utafsiri. According to 1 Corinthians 14. Kulingana na Wakorintho wa kwanza 14. Line number 5. 5 line number 13. 13. Line number 29. 29. 28 Number 3. Ya tatu. It should be confined to three utterances from the individual in any large gathering. Ni lazima ifuatane na tamko tatu katika mahali ambapo watu wako. In other words, kwa maneno mengine, our God is not another of confusion. Mungu wetu si mwanzilishi wa kuchanganyikiwa. There must be control. Lazima kukuwe na mpangilio. And while I am praying this principles. Na wakati ninapoweka uh, haya maangizo, it is only entitled to ministration to other people in it, public. Inapaswa kuhudumia watu katika kongamano ama mahali ambapo ni wazi. But when we are we are praying together. Lakini wakati tunapoomba si wote. Anyone is free to speak in tongues. Kila mtu ako wazi kuongea na ndimi. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anyone is free. Kila mtu ako sawa tu. Washana yeye, washana yeye. Tatu ubiri na mtoto. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let him stay here. Wacha tukae na yeye. Ataona hakuna kitu. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Therefore, hivyo basi it is only limited to imewekewa ime mipaka when it is in public gathering wakati iko katika umati wa watu we are supposed to be uh, to have an interpreter Lazi, wakati tukua kwa katika umati lazima kuwe na mtafsiri i want us also to remind ourselves lazima tujikumbushe that anyone who speak in tongues yeyote ambaye anenena na ndimi can also interpret them anaweza zitafsiri and if you don't have the ability na kama hauna ule uwezo the holy spirit roho wa mungu will raise somebody to interpret atainua mtu atafsiri not this 
jua hili you do not have to speak out immediately hauhitaji kuzungumza kwa nguvu kwa haraka tu when you are in the public wakati uko katika umati the spirit within a prophet is subject to uh, to the control of the prophet a roho ndani ya nabii anapaswa kudhibitiwa na ule nabii the spirit of god has got control roho wa mungu that is in the book of 1 Corinthians 14:12 roho wa mungu ako na ule uwezo wa kudhibiti katika wa korintho wa kwanza 12 14:32 hata Uh, kuchanganyikiwa kwa yale ambayo yanatukia in the service katika ibada he will never cause confusion ataleta kuchanganyikiwa for he is not the author of confusion maana yeye si mwanzilishi wa kuchanganyikiwa i don't know whether you have ever found yourself in a gathering of believers many believers sijui kama umeshajikuta katika kongamano la waaminio as you are praying and worshiping na wakati unapohomba na kubudu you hear somebody there you hear another one 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 here they bring confusion unasikia mmoja pande ile mwingine huku mwingine kule wanaleta kuchanganyikiwa i always give this example napeana huu mfano that we were on a certain mountain praying tulikuwa katika mlima fulani tukiomba and it was an interdenomination interdenomination prayers na ilikuwa ni maombi ya makanisa mengi and while we were there na tukiwa pale i saw an evil spirit attacking uh, some ministers nikaona roho mungu roho mchafu aki akiguza watu fulani and i want them na nikawaonya then the following friday na hivyo basi uh, friday iliyofuatia we were having a kesha tukakuwa tuko na mkesha anita dinom kesha tulikuwa na mkesha wa makanisa mengi mali kwa moja hallelujah hallelujah if you don't have the knowledge of the giftings of the lord kama huna uh, uh, kufahamu karama za Mungu you can find yourself in confusion unaweza jipata katika kuchanganyikiwa and uh, you remember those time the kesha za gishadi Uli, unakumbuka wakati ule kesha za ushago vile waka tunajiashiria freestyle mhm unajua ni ile drum to design to the to the to the kila mtu anaashiria haleluya and as we go that way na tulipokuwa tunafanya yale and this is my prayer na hii ni ombi langu that one day we shall come for a kesha siku moja tutakuja katika mkesha we by we shall do put down all our professionals tutaweka chini zile kofia zetu all our personalities kile ambacho majinsia zetu and decide to go the free way na tutafanya kazi jinsi inapaswa kuwa inafanya and we test of the spirit of the lord na tujaribu roho wa mungu in those days we used to sing the hymn songs wakati wetu kwa naimba nyimbo za tenzi and you can remember na unaweza kumbuka how we were jumping jinsi tulikuwa tunarukaruka we sing the lord tukimsifu mungu as we continue tulipokuwa tunaendelea we are continuing being drunk in the spirit tunaendelea kuwa kulewa katika roho and once we are fully drunk na wakati tulikuwa tume Jazwa kabisa. Was breaking into prayers. Kanisa lilikuwa linaingia lina katika maombi. Na zile mambo ya maombi ya kujifanya. Eh eh. It is true prayers. Tuko tunaomba kweli. And in the midst of those prayers. Na katikati ya zile maombi, I had some tongues. Nikasikia ndimi fulani. I had the interpretation. Nikasikia utafsiri uh, wake. I had my name nikasikia jina langu i had that i have built a house nikasikia amejenga nyumba and that house need a wife na hivyo hiyo nyumba inataka bibi okay i was not ready for a wife akuwa tayari kwa wakati ule and the prophecy continued na unabii ukaendelea and the spirit of the lord is saying it is me na roho wa mungu anasema ni yeye i opened the door nifungua mlango shut very well kaangalia vizuri remember oh others you can remember those gishagis hakuna kufungua macho si kama huko watu wanaobaki kama wamefungua macho wakiangaliana wakati huo hakukuwa kufungua macho huko watu wanakuwa kama wamemaanisha mhm they mean it i shut the environment kaangalia mazigara i realize all people are deep in prayers katambua kwamba wote wanaomba vizuri vizuri i opened the door kafungua mlango out slowly akapenya nje kidogo he turned the door kafunga mlango and left the prophet prophesying na nikaacha nabii akiendelea kutoa unabii 
<laughs> and that is how we parted ways. Na hivyo ndio tuliachana na hizo hiyo maneno. Hallelujah. Amen. So there is no confusion. Hivyo basi hakuna kuchanganyikiwa. In the giftings of the Lord. Katika karama za Mungu. There is no confusion. Hakuna kuchanganyikiwa. He speaks and confirm. Ananena na anadhibitisha. In every prophetic utterance. Na katika kila usemi wa kinabii. It must up the standard of the word. Lazima ikwe katika mipangilio ya neno. Are we together? Tuko pamoja. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to this. Sikiza hili. When the message is complete, wakati ujumbe umeisha, you must wait upon God for the interpretation. Lazima ungoje Mungu alete utafsiri. Pray that uh, you may interpret. Omba ya kwamba utaweza kutafsiri. 1 Corinthians 14:13. Wa Korintho wa kwanza 14:13. But when this does not happen, lakini wakati hili halijatukia Then the one who has spoken in tongues must remain quiet and not speak further if no one is given the interpretation. Hivyo basi yule alikuwa ananena na ndimi anapaswa kunyamaza na asiongee zaidi kama hakuna mwingine amepewa tafsiri. I am giving order because this church is heavily expecting we are in a labor pain. Na labor word. Na peana maagizo ni kwa maana hili kanisa linatarajia kabisa. Before I am through kabla ni tamatishe I don't want to see confusion in the house. Sitaki kuona kuchanganyikiwa katika nyumba. There is order. Kuna mpangilio. Okay? Ndio. Four, number four. Ya ine. The interpretation of tongues. Tafsiri wa ndimi. First Corinthians 12 of 10. Wa Korintho wa kwanza 12:10. In every tongue spoken in public ministration is meant to be interpreted so that it can edify the body of Christ. Kila ndimi ambayo inanenwa katika umati ni lazima itafsiriwe ndipo za ikainue mwili wa Kristo. This is the companion gift that uh, uh, that of tongues. Ini ule ini ile karama ambayo inafuatanisha ile ya ndimi and it is always used in conjunction with that gift na zinatumika zote mbili kwa pamoja it is a supernatural enablement ni kule kule kutiwa nguvu kwa kiungu by the holy spirit na roho mtakatifu to interpret tongues into the known language of the congregation kutafsiri ndimi kwa lugha ambayo inaeleweka ina, ina kwa umati wote raba kakazoko teke handere baliando na hivyo amesema Have you had anything? Je, umesikia chochote? Have I spoken? Je, amenena? Have I spoken? Amenena chochote? Have I spoken maina? Have you understood what I have said? Ume, umeelewa amesema nini? Unless you has got that ability to interpret. Ani ni laz... Isipokuwa ukue na yule ile uwezo wa kutafsiri. It will only become a devotional tongues itakuwa ni, 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 ni sala ama ni ndimi yako mwenyewe binafsi ina inakuinua wewe mwenyewe and not the congregation lakini si watu ambao wako pale hmm. are together tuko pamoja we need to understand that it is not the gift uh, it is not the gift of translation uh, tunapaswa kujua ya kwamba si karama ya ya, ya ku kubadilisha lugha my wife is just translating what i am saying Nina tafsiri ama nabadilisha kile anachosema. The gift of interpreting the tongue is not in translation. Kutafsiri lugha si kubadilishana. The interpreter does not understand the tongues employed in the utterance uh, which was given. The interpreter does not understand. Ah uh, ule mtafsiri huwa haelewi the tongues employed in the utterance which was given. Aua haelewi zile ndimi ambazo zina 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 zinasemwa. The inter- interpretation is just as supernatural as the utterance. Hivyo basi ule utafsiri ni wa kiungu kama vile ile ndimi imekuwa ni ya kiungu. However, hata hivyo, by this gift of, of the spirit, kwa hii karama ya roho, we are enabled to give the healing of what was spoken in the unknown tongues. Tu tu tuna hatuwezi kupeana Ufasa ama kuelewa kwa ile lugha ambayo ilikuwa imetajwa hapo hawali. We however we are unable tunawezeshwa to give basi, the healing of what was spoken in the unknown language. Hivyo basi tunafanya kuwezeshwa kuelewa kile ambacho kilikuwa kimesemwa kwa ile lugha ambayo tukuelewa. In that way 
Kwa hivyo, the congregation may understand and be edified by it. Hivyo basi ule ile kongamano linaezaelewa na liinuliwe litiwe nguvu kwa ile kwa ile tafsiri. They may receive it and be edified. Wanaweza ipokea na watiwe nguvu. Then the question is very simple. Hivyo basi swali ni rahisi. Who may use this gift? Nani anapaswa kutumia hiki hii karama? Of interpretation. Ya kutafsiri lugha. The interpretation of tongue is given as the spirit wills. Kule kutafsiri kuna peanwa kama vile roho anataka. 1 Corinthians 12:11. Wa Korintho wa kwanza 12:11. All these are the works of one and the same spirit. Ya kwamba hizi zote ni za roho moja. And he gives them each uh, uh, to each one just as he determines. Na anapeana kwa yoyote ambaye anataka. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All who speak in tongues are clearly taught wale ambao wananena na dimi wanaambiwa according to 1 Corinthians 14:13 kulingana na Korintho wa kwanza 14:15 let him speak in tongues pray that he may interpret ya kwamba naye nena na dimi aombe ya kwamba ajue tafsiri yake we need to seek to develop the sensitivity to the holy spirit ni lazima tutafute kujua sensitivity katika roho ya Mungu kujihisi kujihisi katika roho ya Mungu amen amen while you are worshiping god in a, in a gathering of believers wakati tunapowaabudu bwana katika kongamano la watu keep your mind and your spirit open to the holy spirit wacha mawazo yako na roho yako iko imefunguka katika katika uwezesho wa roho mtakatifu frequently you sense beforehand that someone is going to speak in tongues and that god is giving you the interpretation of it Hivyo basi utahisi kwamba Mungu ana kwa karibu kuachilia ndimi na atakupea karama ya kuitafsiri. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But mark this. Lakini jua hili. As you commence to give forth what what the spirit is giving you. Basi unapooshika kile ambacho roho anasema. Speak in a normal clear audible voice. Hivyo basi sungumza na sauti ya kawaida inayosikika kabisa vyema. Take care not to speak beyond the proportion of your faith. Na usiongee zaidi ya imani yako. According to Romans 12:6. Kulingana na Warumi 12:6. Don't interpret what have not been spoken. Usiseme kile ambacho hakikusemwa. Just speak in proportion. Sungumza kulingana na vile imesemwa. I went for a volume in Kisumu. Nikaenda mazishi kule Kisumu. And the guy who was interpreting for me na yule aliyekuwa na tafsiri kwangu without language that i did not understand na ile lugha ambayo sikuelewa i didn't know whether he is interpreting what i am preaching or he has got his own preaching sijui kama alikuwa na tafsiri na kile nasema ama alikuwa na tafsiri kile yeye anajua you know probably he was cursing me unajua anaweza kuwa alikuwa alikuwa analaani mchungaji ama anaongea vitu zake therefore you need to speak hivyo basi unapaswa kuzungumza in a normal clear audible voice na sauti ya kawaida ambayo inasikika vyema that can be understood by everyone ambayo inaweza kueleweka na kila mtu finally atimaye avoid letting any person thoughts ah uh, usi uh, avoid letting any person thoughts usiake mawazo yako ya kibinafsi feelings or ideas ama isia zako ama mawazo yako creep into the interpretation ingia katika ule utafsiri let your own thoughts be in neutral and your mind be a clear channel for the holy spirit to flow through you wacha mawazo yako yawe katika hali ya kujiachilia kujiachilia na wacha roho wa Mungu achukue nafasi usiongee maneno yaliyo yako amen because any word that you add kwa sababu kila neno utakalo liongeza na kila neno utakalo lipunguza utapeana hesabu yake utahukumiwa kwa hilo neno kwa hivyo basi kuwa uh, wazi na sauti inayosikika na vile imesema and in that mood na katika ile hali i know i am speaking to somebody najua nazungumza na mtu just bow your head hivyo basi namisha kichwa chako and tell god to speak to your life naambie bwana anene na moyo wako in the line of the giftings katika nchia ya kipawa the giftings are given according to the proportion of faith na kivazi zinapeanwa kulingana na ile sehemu ya imani yako all according to the measure of grace na kulingana na kipimo cha neema that has been dispensed over our lives ile ambacho kimeachiliwa katika maisha yetu it is the spirit of the lord ni roho wa mungu who distribute those 
giftings as per his own will. However, there is no one among us who are born again who doesn't have a gift. Tell God to provoke that gift in you. Tell God to help you to understand and know in the area you have been called to serve. It is only the spirit of the Lord that can quicken your inner person. We don't beg for the giftings. We don't beg. To beg to part a karama. It is given according to the measure of grace. And according to our maturity. For thy has spoken to your people. As they do a personal evolution. And as they go through their life. I know that there is an earlier that you have spoken to them. The earlier that you have reminded them that you gifted them with how I pray that you may help them Jesus to provoke and to rekindle those giftings until they burn to frames there is no gift to be hidden because we shall be referred as shrewd and unfaithful servants. And as we exercise this gifting, Father, how I pray that you may give us order so that we do not bring any confusion in the body of Christ. But above it all, Jesus, remind us always that we are different parts of the body, but one body, which is meant to build, which is meant to build, at the body of Christ or the church of God. I give you praise and I give you honor. In Jesus' name, I do pray and give thanks. Amen. Amen.